Today we'll be taking a quick look at the Hitbox TIG 200A. This is a 200 amp TIG and stick welder that runs on both 110 and 220. On the front and bottom panel of the welder, we'll find the ground lead connector, the TIG switch connector, the TIG torch lead connector, and of course the stick lead connector. On the top we have the on off, the TIG and stick selector, the 2T and 4T selector, and the amperage control. On the back it is the quarter inch barbed gas connector. It is attached and not easily removable. The power cable is a 14 gauge cord with the name of 515 connector on the end of it. This is a 110 volt 15 amp rating. This is the included flow meter that comes with the TIG welder. It's a pretty cheap one. They usually go for $30, $40 on eBay or Amazon. Uh, I believe the same one is available at Harbor Freight for about the same price. This side is argon and CO2, and this side is just argon. Both sides are measured in liters per minute. This is your adjustment dial and our quarter inch barb. It does require a hose clamp on both ends of the hose. If you're going to be connecting and disconnecting this hose from the welder or the flow meter very often, I'd recommend looking into a hose with thread on fittings on each end for the longevity. The included TIG torch is an air-cooled WP-17 with a 12-foot lead. It is rated for 150 amps, but it gets pretty hot when you get your current up that high. The head rotates left and right, and the tail section of the handle is a ball and socket connection to add flex and strain relief. This torch is compatible with most WP-17 accessories, like the glass cone and gas lens that is installed here. Note that the glass cone and the leather sheath shown in this video are not included with this torch. These were accessories bought after the fact. On the other end of the lead are the connectors for the welder. One is power and gas and the other is for the switch. These aftermarket leather sheaths wrap around the lead and attach with velcro. This is the included stinger for stick welding. It has a 6 foot lead and a 3 8 pin dense connector. The stinger is very cheap, but it'll get the job done. If you're going to be doing a lot of stick welding with this unit, I recommend just throwing the stinger away and going and buying a new stinger and attaching it to the included 6 foot lead. The included ground clamp is stamped out of 132nd galvanized steel. The spring pressure is pretty good and it holds firm. There is a braided copper strap that connects the jaws on both sides. Both jaws are bolted on and the lead itself is bolted directly to the jaws and is not crimped onto the handle. This uses a 3 8 pin DENS connector and a 5 foot lead. This is the included 110 to 220 adapter. Nothing special, just decent quality and it'll do the job just fine. I think one of the best features of this welder is that it's a high frequency start. It's not a scratch start or a lift start like a lot of the cheap welders that you'll find in this price range. Instead, you'll notice that whenever I go to start the arc, my tungsten never actually touches the metal. Of course, this doesn't change the fact that I'm new to TIG welding and I've touched the tungsten to the steel enough on my own. And every time that happens, you have to stop, let it cool down, pull the tungsten out, regrind a new point on there, get set back up, and start back over again. Gonna weld some coupons together. On this one I'm gonna do a butt weld and I'm gonna use 16th inch ER70S6 mild steel filler rod. I didn't do any heavy prep work to this metal before welding it, just some light sanding with a 2 inch abrasive pad on a die grinder. This is just 8th inch thick mild steel, running about 85 amps on the welder and I'm running off of a 110 outlet with a 20 amp breaker. Here I'm doing a pass without any filler rod. This is called fusion welding. It pulls a little bit of material from both pieces and puddles them together in the middle. There are pros and cons to doing the TIG welding without a filler rod. It pulls metal from both pieces to create the new weld. This leaves the metal on both sides of the weld a little bit thinner and therefore a little bit weaker. 
It's also really hard to fill any gaps without a filler rod. So the fusion welding probably won't work in that application. And I definitely don't recommend the fusion welding for structural applications either. On this corner weld, I am back to using the 16th inch ER70 filler rod. This welder seems to have plenty enough power for anything around the house or garage, anything DIY. Obviously it's not a commercial unit and you wouldn't expect to get commercial quality out of something that was $220, $250. But even with such a cheap price, you can see in the video the arc's consistent and I'm not having any trouble maintaining the weld. I by no means know what I'm doing with the TIG welder. Uh, my experience is with stick and MIG for many years and I got this welder a few months ago. This is the first time I've ever used a TIG so I have less than one tank of gas ran through it so far so I really don't have that much experience with it yet. One thing to note with this torch being air cooled it does get hot pretty quick so keep that in mind whenever you're welding. Give it a break every now and then let it cool down. So far, all of the welding that I've done with this has been using 100% argon as the shielding gas. I've also been using an 8th inch and 16th inch tungsten electrode. I find the 16th inch works quite a bit better with the lower current levels. I didn't do any type of prep work to these two pieces of mild steel. I really should have. They have some sort of electroplated finish on them. Uh, it really should have been ground down before welding them. You can see there's a little bit of undercut and a little bit of porosity in there too. Here are two pieces of stainless steel exhaust pipe that I welded together. This was actually one of the very first few things that I've welded and probably the second piece of stainless steel that I welded with this welder. So far I've been loving this welder and it's been doing a great job. When I bought it there was several mixed reviews on Amazon but I figured hey for 250 bucks I'll take the gamble and see where it goes. With features like dual voltage and high frequency start and all the quality accessories that it came with I highly recommend this one for anybody looking to start out with TIG welding. In part two of the review I'll be going over assembling the unit and the sum of the settings and how to actually start welding with the TIG. Next week I'll be doing part one of a review on a 150 amp uh, 110-220 MIG welder so stick around for that. Thanks for watching the video. If you like it, subscribe. If you have questions or comments, just leave them in the comments below and I'll try to address them. Thanks guys.